Good morning, everyone. I'm Stuart Ledbetter, and this is NBC5 In-Depth. T.J. Donovan has been a fixture in Vermont elections and on local TV screens for years. Now, in his third term as attorney general, he's followed in the family business of law and politics. The walls of his office in Montpelier tell the story. Federal Judge Bernard Letty, his grandfather, nearly won election as governor of Vermont. His mother and uncle served many terms at the State House. Until recently, T.J. was considered a rising star in the Democratic Party. But tomorrow, he will resign as attorney general for a new job in the private sector. This morning, a conversation about why he's leaving, what he'll remember, and what he's learned in his years in public office. When did you know? Self, I got to do something different. <laughs> uh, I think the last year I've been thinking about it. Uh, and I've had those conversations internally uh, with folks here. And then I think, um, you know, as the winter progressed and, you know, this was a condensed time period because of COVID. And, you know, you had the election in 20, we we're home uh, for the last two years. And all of a sudden you're coming up to May where you got to decide. And um, I had been thinking about it, but it was a hard choice. Uh, and it was a tough decision, but I feel good about it. And I'm very excited about this next opportunity which is with Roblox Corporation, uh, a firm I'm not familiar with, but you're going to be involved in video gaming development? Well, I'm going to be the director of public policy in United States strategy. And Roblox is a platform for the immersive experience, uh, obviously online, uh, for kids, for teens. Uh, so my role certainly will be talking about uh, consumer protection and child protection and privacy issues that I've worked on in, in this area. Uh, and I'm very excited uh, about the opportunity and it's it's an opportunity that I look forward to uh, embarking upon. A lot more money? Well, look, I've been in government for the last 19, 19 years, uh, 16 as an elected official, but we're now going to the private sector. So yes, good for you. Let's talk about your career in public service for a minute. I mean. We first came to know you as state's attorney in, in Chittenden County, uh, the busiest courthouse in the state, and you became known as somewhat of a progressive prosecutor. Now that term is somewhat in dispute, but um, you know you saw some grisly things. You also pushed for uh, some reform. Yeah, being state's attorney was just a, it's a great job. Um, and I think for me, having grown up in Burlington, uh, it was really special to be in that position. And you worked with people uh, who you grew up with, you knew their families, uh, you knew them sometimes right. um, personally. And to be in that position of, of trust um, was, was a humbling experience. And you know, look, I'm not into labels of progressive prosecutor, tough on crime, smart on crime. It's about common sense, it's about compassion, it's about believing in second chances, uh, it's about doing an analysis um, about uh, the risk uh, versus uh, the need about somebody's underlying uh, needs or issues. And you do that on a case-by-case -case basis. And for me, um, people are struggling. And you certainly know the difference between uh, a serious crime with the impact on public safety versus somebody who uh, needs help, who's struggling with addiction, who's suffering from mental illness. It's a big part of the criminal justice system. So for me, it was never really necessarily about those labels or, or even these grand policies. It was about people um, meeting them where they're at, trying to help them, listening to victims, uh, and trying to do what I thought was right. And, you know, I think what I'll miss, Stuart, and you've been in that courthouse a lot in your job, obviously, uh, is just this energy of the people in that courthouse, uh, whether it's uh, the police officers, the defense attorneys, victims, defendants, um, court personnel. Uh, everybody kind of came together and we worked together and you were able to kind of make decisions um, that impacted people's lives right in that moment. Uh, very powerful, very humbling, um, and something that uh, I, I don't think will ever leave me. In 2016, the county prosecutor moved up. Donovan, who'd been arrested by police for assault as a young man and given a second chance, was elected overwhelmingly by the voters as attorney general of the state. In your role as attorney general, you spent a lot of time next door uh, before the legislature. Let me ask you about uh, one bill that was uh, watered down quite a bit this year, 
whether Vermont should do away with qualified immunity for police officers. Now that you're free, what should Vermont do? Is it time to make a change? Well, it's something that we have to constantly be looking at. You know, the, I, I've never accepted in politics or in government uh, the line that, well, this is the way we've always done it, so that's the way we're going to continue to do it. We should always be challenging and thinking about how do we do things better? How do we do things differently? Uh, but we have to do it in a way that's balanced and that's fair to everybody. The men and women who make up Vermont law enforcement are good people. They have an incredibly difficult job and a stressful job. What I didn't like about the qualified immunity bill was that we were gonna make the men and women who are the police officers are say personally liable um, uh, to pay out of their own pocket um, uh, uh, money should they be sued. I don't think that was the right message to send to law enforcement. I think what's happened in politics is we've gone to the extremes and it's either or, and it's never either or. It's oftentimes a negotiation and a compromise and a, and a balance about finding something in the middle that works for everybody. You're not gonna make everybody happy. That's the other thing in politics, you gotta understand. You're gonna get criticized, it's part of the job. Um, but we gotta make sure that we make decisions uh, that are balanced, that take into account all different points of views and continue to make positive change. So Vermont is the best place for people to come to raise a family and go to work. I mean, that's, that's the goal. And when you talk about public safety, you, hey, when bad things happen and bad things do happen, you're gonna call 911 and the police are gonna respond. We should thank them. We should protect them, we should defend them. But we should also continue to work on policies that make how we deliver public safety services and how we police more fair and more equitable because of the his historic disproportionate impact the public safety, not just police, prosecutors, judges, the court system have had on people of color, the poor and the mentally ill. That's who make up in a disproportionate impact people who are in jail. Then you start talking about the collateral consequences of what that means to have a record. You can't get a job, you can't get housing, you take away opportunity and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So we gotta think deeply about these issues, but we gotta think in, in a way that's inclusive, that's balanced, and get away from, um, I think, the extremes of, of positions and find common ground and work uh, to advance uh, the cause of justice, to work to advance uh, progress in this state. And of course we should be having these conversations about qualified immunity and how we police but we gotta support the men and women in law enforcement. We can have a debate about the policies, but let's support the personnel. As Attorney General, Donovan defended the state from lawsuits, including the EB-5 scandal. He sued drug manufacturers, scam artists, and pressed for reforms at the State House, including a law that now bars employers from including a question on job applications, asking about one's criminal history. I'm guessing you won't miss testifying as often as you did before the Judiciary Committees I, of the House I, and Senate. Listen, I always enjoyed it. Um, tough, Truth. Tough questions, tough questions, and look, Vermont's a special place. I'll tell you a funny story. I remember um, a few years back, I brought somebody up who was really a subject matter uh, in criminal justice issues and reform from New York City. It was part of a kind of a think tank down there. And he was very nervous coming to the Vermont State House. I said, it's Vermont, don't worry about it. Well, what should I wear? I said, well, wear, wear, put on a suit and tie, don't worry about it. And um, we brought him into the committee room and he couldn't believe uh, how friendly, how informal, but how serious the dialogue was. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you can't replicate in any other state. And I think you're over there. People don't take themselves seriously, but they take their work seriously. They care about the issues. It's a citizen legislature. Mm. So there's, there's a lot of back and forth. And there's a lot of questions that you're gonna have all the lawyers in the room, they're never gonna think about. They're never gonna anticipate. Now, leaving politics. This was his letter to the governor announcing his decision to resign. It's effective Monday. Donovan tells us he's only taking a break. 
Some he worked with are now reaching out, like professional firefighters he'd advocated for over better workplace protections. He's been a strong advocate, um, loyal to us, our needs, a good listener. I mean, I can go on and on. You come from a political family. Yeah. Your grandfather was a federal judge, ran for governor. Um, your mom, your uncle served in the legislature. And they talked about you as a potential candidate for governor or maybe for Congress. And now you're walking away. What was their reaction? What was the family's <laughs> reaction? They were very supportive. Yeah. Uh, look, this is, these are tough, these are tough jobs. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think to be a, an elected prosecutor for close to 16 years where you're really that executive, where you're making decisions every single day that impact people's lives. Um, it's a hard job. Um, I also think that um, I, would, I would not do it any other way. Um, I've always viewed uh, my strength in these roles as my accessibility to Vermonters. I believe in helping people. Um, I believe in giving people my cell phone and uh, letting people contact me. And um, at, at some point in time, though, um, that becomes that becomes a lot to handle. Yeah. And I think for 16 years, I've I've done it well. I've tried to do, do my best, but I do need a break from politics. Uh, I think you know, I was just saying to folks in my office, um, the first year of the pandemic, I'd send an office-wide email every, every morning, and I'd have some quote most mornings. I just believe the power of words. Uh, I couldn't do it the second year. Um, and I just think taking a break sometimes uh, is the right call. Uh, for 16 years being that chief executive of making decisions on whether or not um, a shooting was justified, dealing with and trying to comfort uh, victims of, of assaults and murders, uh, it's hard mm. and, and it does take a toll on you. And you, and you remember, at least I do, um, you remember that. Um, and that's, that, takes, that takes a, I, I think, a level of energy um, and I think empathy and compassion uh, that sometimes uh, you, you need to kind of uh, re refuel and restore. Finally, as you leave your um, public role, at least for now, an answer this uh, question. As I leave, I am most proud of? Um, I'm most proud of staying humble and staying committed and accessible to the people of Vermont, to being responsive, to caring, to believing in the goodness of all people and giving second chances to people because that's what Vermont gave to me when I was growing up here. Mr. Attorney General, Thanks, good luck Stuart. to you. Thanks, Thank you. you. All right. T.J. Donovan with apologies for the missing N. Starting Monday, Deputy Attorney General Josh Diamond takes over. His dad served as AG in the 70s. Governor Scott could replace him with his own pick until the outcome of the fall election. Scott's aides say he's weighing the options. Ahead.